everyone. Our next session is all about social video, how to crush TikTok, Instagram TV, and more. I have two fast-paced interviews with leading brands, and we're going to be covering strategy, content, measurement, paid versus organic. Our first interview is with Sarah Henry. She's the senior director and head of content and influencer marketing at Walmart. Um, when it comes to social video, Walmart is the industry leader. They were the first to do live shopping on TikTok. They have over 550,000 TikTok followers, plus they have individual store accounts, and they have a broad influencer program across social. Sarah, I'm thrilled to have you join me. Thanks so much, Veronica. Thrilled to be here. I've heard there's some great content today. It's definitely been an exciting day. We've we've had a lot of fun with TikTok and, and with some podcasts and TV sessions. It's been great. Um, so we this is going to go fast, and we have a lot of questions to cover. So I'm going to dive right in. Um, when it comes to social video, which channels do you focus on? Yeah, for us, I mean, I would say it's all the usual suspects. We're, we're pretty active on um, on all of them. But for us, I think how that activity manifests itself and sort of where we prioritize and, um, you know, what we do on them shows up in how consumers are using the platform. So, for instance, um, for, you know, entertainment hubs, and I would put probably TikTok in this category, it's like, how do we tap into reaching a new audience base and provide entertaining experiences for um, more communication um, based hubs. Maybe there's an opportunity for us to create a meaningful dialogue, maybe a community um, you know, based aspect with customers, things like that. And then I think um, there's a really interesting one around discovery hubs. And I would probably put something like a Pinterest in this category. And it's all about, you know, this customer mindset of discovery, inspiration, and usually like customers and, and consumers are going there because they're trying to solution around something, whether that's, you know, meal planning or planning an event or solving for a routine or redecorating their home or whatever it happens to be. And so there's a really interesting sort of social and social video play in those types of discovery hubs around tapping into where they're finding inspiration inspiration and also just finding meaningful ways to help them solution and turn that into a reality. So um, really, really just depends on how consumers are using that platform and how it makes um, sort of best sense to, to show up. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And I guess it, it's going to depend somewhat on the platform. But do you do you view social video as a branding or a performance channel at Walmart? Yeah, definitely both. I mean, I think, again, it depends on what part of the journey or mindset our customers are in. And then also just candidly, what objective we're, um, you know, we're, we're trying to drive. Some of our objectives are purely performance based and are really about, um, you know, driving effective and qualified traffic. It's customer acquisition and retention, correlated sales, things like that. And, um, you know, we, we show up, um, you know, in, in service of that objective, both organically and through paid media. Um, the branding ones are really interesting in that they're, they're just um, a lot of the, the focus is around things like um, perception shift, sentiment shift, branding, um, you know, awareness, things like that, and maybe even driving, you know, consideration. And so, um, you know, it really just depends. I think a really good example of, um, you know, branding and social video, this was not necessarily sales based at all, but I think about how we've all had to live our lives during the pandemic and how we've had to sort of celebrate old traditions in new ways and find new ways to entertain and things like that. And I think about a recent activation that we did over the holidays, which was the holiday drone show, where we actually had drone shows in local Walmart parking lots across the nation, but we live streamed them across Facebook and Instagram watch. And it was just a really interesting way to sort of bring communities together in a way that, again, wasn't sales focused, but but really did achieve that kind of, um, you know, brand uh, branding and, and um, sort of positioning and sentiment play. And that makes sense that depending on kind of the context, it will have different different um, ways that you look at it. Now, um, I mentioned this in the intro, and I think a lot of people are probably very interested because you were the first, um, Walmart was the first to do the live shopping event on TikTok. Can you talk about how that went and what that involved? Yeah, absolutely. So um, really, really fun activation. So um, for those that, that aren't familiar, this was a recent activation that we did in mid-December. So, um, you know, really, really focused around a unique opportunity with TikTok, uh, TikTok to be 
their first partner in bringing a shoppable live stream to the US. And so what was unique about this, and we had done live streams before, but what was unique about this was it, it sort of took on the form of a variety show. So think like holiday shop along spectacular. And so we were able to bring together this really diverse and, and fun group of well-known TikTok creators ranged from anywhere from like, you know, 40 million fans, um, you know, level of, of creator uh, recognition with, with Michael Lee to up and coming TikTokers. Um, and really it was just this fun blend of these creators coming together, talking about, um, the, the whole show was oriented around fashion. So it was them talking about their favorite looks that they were able to select themselves um, and, and just um, modeling the looks, talking about what they liked about them and, and really just bringing it to life in a really fun way. The unique aspect of this was that the whole thing was shoppable. So as you had a creator talking about a specific part of their look, you had a pin that would pop up and show sort of the exact product that that mapped to. And you as a user could click into that and you could shop from the live stream without ever leaving the TikTok app. So the level of shoppability and seamless experience was really, um, you know, I think um, uh, something that we got a ton of learnings from, but just really, really um, a way for us to continue to innovate while, you know, tapping into an entertaining experience and, and sort of translating that into a shoppable moment. And so I think, um, you know, in terms of how it did, um, you know, again, this was the first time this product was tested. And um, March the first time that anyone did anything like this on a TikTok live stream. So we were really charting new territory. I think we went into it with a lot of questions. And I think overall, we're really pleased with how things were, um, went in terms of learning agenda. Um, I'd say we, we surpassed a lot of KPIs that we had set around audience size and engagement. Um, customers had a smooth experience checking out, which was great. And um, really happy to see that we had an increase in TikTok followers following the event. So I think in terms of, um, you know, just having a test and learn mentality here at Walmart and, you know, having the opportunity to innovate with TikTok on, you know, a brand new shopping experience, it was just really great to get those learnings and also just um, continue to, to explore what's possible for shopping um, you know, within TikTok and beyond. Yeah, I mean, it's it's impressive that a brand the size of Walmart was able to be such an early adopter on a channel like that. Um, well, one of the things you you mentioned with respect to your TikTok shopping event was how influence were, influencers were involved. So I want to kind of double click on that for a moment. You know, how do influencers play into your social video strategy? Yeah, we have a pretty vast network of influencers. And so it, it spans broader than video, but video is definitely a huge piece of it. And so we have influ an influencer network that ranges over 10,000. It ranges from anywhere from micro and niche influencers with just a few hundred um, or a few thousand followers on up to essentially just under the echelon of our celebrity talent. And so really, really wide and vast network. Some of them are um, endemic to their platform. So some of them are like famous on TikTok or famous on Instagram, et cetera. Some of them, um, you know, in a wide variety for us are um, those that are really able to translate a relatable message and really are creating an authentic sort of storytelling type of a vibe to our, um, you know, our target audiences. And so think things like um, influencers that are also like just super relatable moms that'll tell you how like pickup and delivery is putting time and sanity back into their day in a meaningful way, or how Walmart Plus is something that is really a game changer when it comes to trying to do the juggle of Zoom and getting dinner on the table and doing chores and, you know, all, and, and virtual homeschooling and all the things that we do on a daily basis. And so for us, influencers is as much about like the, you know, awareness driving well known as it is if not more about driving relatable and sort of authentic storytelling. And so video is definitely a vehicle in which we do that. Makes a lot of sense. And, and there's so many stories you have to tell as a brand like Walmart because the different kind of shopping demographics. Um, can, I, I know a lot of people have been, have used influencers and they probably are looking at like, how does your influencer program work? Do you pay your influencers? Can you talk a little bit about how that program was put in place? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so, so we pair influencers out in a little bit of a, a hybrid model. And so, here at Walmart, even even though we have you know efforts that are specifically branded, efforts that are specifically performance um, oriented, one of the things that we're really mindful about is applying performance based principles to whatever we can. And so, it's really about you know structuring um, you know the the um, 
the nature of the channel to what we're trying to drive, um, you know, whether that's awareness or consideration, engagement or conversion based goals. And so with influencers, it's interesting because they play such a hybrid role, like they're driving conversion and performance and customer activity, but they're actually also playing a role across driving consideration, discoverability, relatability, et cetera. And so for us, we look at it on a hybrid structure in that, yes, we want to drive performance, we want to drive traffic, we want to drive customer acquisition. And so a portion of how we, you know, sort of economically structure that is commission or rev share based, similar to an affiliate model. And then we also have flat fees in some cases that are unlocking things like content creation, media amplification, that kind of thing. We also um, leverage and utilize influencers for more than just, you know, sort of organic and paid reach in that, um, we love using influencer content across our, you know, other paid marketing and owned marketing channels. So think like, um, you know, um, think like leveraging influencer content and retargeting. Think like leveraging influencer content across owned, um, earned properties and stores and things like that. So that all the factors. In. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so it's it's a whole de the model, I guess, just depends on how you're using the content and ultimately, um, you know, what it's being used for. Now we only have time for one more question, so I want to end with measurement in this today. You know, if you look at social video overall, we talked about a little bit how you're compensating influencers, but if you look at social video as a whole, what are you looking for um, in terms of measuring its performance? How do you know you like what what is a kind of metric of success? Not a specific metric, but what are the kind of KPIs you look at? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's it's so funny. It's a hybrid channel. And so it's one of those channels that for us is interesting because it can do a lot of different things from a you know how it plays a role across the marketing funnel. And so for us, it's as much about things like driving viewership, driving engagement, intent to purchase. And I probably classify that in the awareness and consideration part of the bucket. But equally, and just depending on what we're trying to drive at a thematic or categorical level or whatever it is, we're also looking at um, propensity to drive things like customer acquisition, retention, LTV over time, how that bakes out in terms of correlated sales and return on investment. And then I'd say like probably the squishiest one that we've really... Um, that has really been interesting is to look at overall kind of brand favorability and sentiment of Walmart over time. And I'm, I'm talking about sentiment, not just in terms of like how many comments were good and had the, the word awesome in it, um, but really sentiment of like, can we create a model where Walmart is, you know, sort of in a customer's consideration set beyond, you know, just, um, uh, you know, what it would have been, before, what their, what their considerations that would have been before. So, you know, lots of different, um, lots of different KPIs. I feel like I just gave you an a la carte <laughs> menu, but, um, but, uh, but really interesting to dive into. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. This was fast. It was fun.